Okay, the time is finally here. So deep in V20, the beta has just been released. It's been delayed for quite a while. Um, yesterday, I think it finally got released. What we're going to do, I've tested it out on a virtual machine before we're doing a native install now. The um, During my testing, I noticed it won't let you install anything under 120 or 160 gig hard drive. I've, it's one of those two, I can't remember which. And it does something funny with your partition. So what we're going to do in this video is natively install it to a spare laptop here. And we're going to capture the footage with the capture card that you can see now. So we've selected English already and we have accepted the Deepin Software End User License Agreement. I will not be using this anyway, so I'll wipe this laptop after we've done all of this. But I thought it'd be nice just to have a look at it. So it does sound quite funny with your partitions, like I just said. So you get one partition for your boot EFI, another one for boot. And then you just get an EXT4 or 15 gig there, another 15 gig one of root B. You get a data partition ext4 which is 191 gigs so that's the majority of our disk on that partition you get a recovery partition of 10 gig and then it gives you a swap partition of 6 gig and then it will ask you if you want to go through those steps we shall click continue right i'm going to pause the video here and then when we come back we'll be booting off disk okay we are all installed onto disk now and um, this is the default deep in v20 look so what we're going to do is just have a little look around so as you can see this bottom bar now has got quite a few changes done to it and the default mode that it will present you with is fashion mode so what they've done is they made it longer so the length is, extends to each end of the screen almost and then you get some rounded corners there with a little gap that separates it and there's a little gap there at the bottom as well so it kind of floats so if we start from the right you get a trash icon there for your rubbish bin you have your power on and off button there you have a clock with the time and date and then you have your onboard settings and there's a little toggle here which will show and hide the rest of your indicators so things like power your network connections uh, notification bell clicking that will open up a notification center oh at least it should there we go clicking that will open up your notifications and if we had any notifications they would appear there but you'd also get a little sort of drop down flashy thing there as well maybe if we get some notifications throughout this sort of quick overview we'll see that um, there's your sound removable discs and keyboard so now here in the middle is where your sort of pinned applications would be so think like um, chrome os if you like in their shelf they have their stuff in the middle and i think that's maybe where they've borrowed this idea from a little bit so it has control center calendar music album app store and now uses Chromium as its web browser and the files manager. And then to the left, you have your multitasking view, which we'll have a look at in a moment. You have a show desktop icon, and then you have your launcher. I don't know if the launcher has changed too much. So again, you can still do that and make it full screen. And again, you can also click a button here that my face is sort of hiding at the moment. That will give you categories there as well. So let's just leave it in the default so it shows it all like that. Right. So let's start with the control center because a lot's changed actually with the control center. So if you remember in the other deeper videos that we've done, the control center would open at the right and you control everything like that. You now have sort of its own application all housed in this window here. So I'm going to imagine all the same stuff's there. It's just, it's just been put in this window now to maybe make things easier. So let me go on to the one thing that I found a bit cramped in the way they used to do it beforehand, which was the keyboard shortcuts. So let's see how it all works now. So if we was to full screen that, see, I think that's better. You get more of a sort of outlook of what's going on and then you can click this little add button there to add a new keyboard shortcut. I like that. Very good. And as you can see, this window all has rounded corners as well. So let's go on to accounts. So on accounts, we're not going to do anything there, but that's our user account, cloud account. That's the one I wanted. So you could sign in and use cloud sync for the app store, email client browser. So let's just click it. We're not going to do it. But let's see what it does. I think that's only available to um, sort of the Chinese market. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. Here is the sort of the display settings. Oh no! So we got a bit of a delay, but I think that is going to open the um, online stuff. There we go. So we have this cloud sync thing here. Um, so clicking sign up. We're not going to sign up, but it will open up the Deep in Account website page. And again, that's going to open it up in Chromium which is version um, what version is that 79 so not the very latest version and as you can see this is built on top of debian 
So here's the um, sort of account creation page. If it actually loads, it might be because of where we are. So we're not too worried about that anyway. There we go. So it's in Chinese. Can we get it in English? But I think this is only available to the Chinese market. So we're not going to worry about that too much. And I probably wouldn't do that myself anyway. So we're going to close that. So that was the online account. So here we've got the um, display settings, which we've already used to set up this duplicate here for our screen mirror. But you also have brightness here and display scaling. So we're on normal scaling, so nothing there. Okay, default applications. So default application for your email is Funbird. Text editor is um, their version, their text editor. So it's called like Deep in Edit, or it used to be. What is it now? So it still comes up if you write deep in edit, but they've changed the title to just text editor. And there's your text editor. So we'll leave that open. And we're going to pop open a terminal to see how that looks as well. So the terminal hasn't changed too much. Um, not quite as rounded as everything else is appearing to be. So you've got quite a straight edges there on the corner. And I wonder if we have HTOP installed out of the box. We don't. So we're going to quickly install HTOP so we can keep an eye on the RAM as we go through things. Type in our password. Okay, so there is no HTOP. Maybe if we've done an update, it might be there. And here are the repos. So it's okay, sorry, we just had a quick crash there um, on my capture card, not on deep in. So we're back. I don't know where I got to. So what we were doing was a quick update. And as you can see, here's the repos there. So it uses CDM package store six deepin.com slash app store. And it's failed to fetch something from the community package repo there as well. So it says that we've got some packages to upgrade. So let's quickly see what that is. I hate this keyboard on this laptop. What have we done wrong? Up. We need a G. There we go. So we have deep in album, deep in deb installer, deep in draw, deep in image viewer, deep in music, and deep in movie. So we're going to upgrade those now. Oh, I hate this keyboard, you know. Right, we're going to upgrade those packages. Shouldn't take too long. And as you can see now, it will open up the programs to the right of the pin programs. And if you were to right click on them, you can go to dock and then it will dock them and it will stay there when you click close. So what should happen is that it should go to the left when we were to close that. Okay. And then as you can see, the indicators there are a little dash. Um, so the open one that's in the focus has a blue and then ones that are in the background have no color there at all. So if we was to click that, that would then come into focus there. Okay. So let's keep going. In music, again, it will be music deep in music, so we're not going to worry about that. So here we are in personalization. So let's full screen that. So as you can see now, we have light, auto, and dark. So what auto will do, will probably change it depending on the color of the day. So what we're going to do is click on dark and have a look at it in dark mode. So there you go. It will sort of change the look of each application to fit that theme. I don't know if it does anything to this launcher so if we've done that there we go the launcher's got a darker shade to it as well i quite like that actually right let's go back into that and then you can set how transparent things are as well so now let's have a look at that launcher i don't know if it's took effect yet or not mm, not too sure there there's your application switcher with alt tab okay so, and you can also turn off the Windows FX by clicking that toggle, and then you'll get a solid color. And as you can see, you're getting blocky straight lines, no rounded corners there. So if we re-enable that, you then get your rounded corners back. Okay, so that's personalization network. We don't need to go into too much. Here's sound, where you can control the volume of your system, and you also have microphone advanced where you can sort of select which output, output you want to use. And in the sound effects, you have your sort of startup sound effects, volume toggle sound effects, and things like that. We're going to just turn that off for now. So Bluetooth, quickly have a look at the Bluetooth there. So there's your Bluetooth setting where you can scan for devices and add your Bluetooth devices. Oh, so you, it's got a little um, setting here for the boot menu now. So you can make a startup delay and you can switch the theme there. So if we just to untoggle that and type in our password, 
it will then just go to a black screen will it okay so let's retoggle it and then we'll keep it as the default that it has okay and we'll quickly look at mouse as well so here you can set the scrolling speed and your double click speed and the little test with your little bunny ears there is that a bunny it looks like a white jigglypuff okay let's click close and um, we're going to have a look at a couple more things so we're going to open up some of their default programs now um, so here's the files manager let's open the deep in app store so the icon theme is not too bad and you get a little shadow around each disk there and here is the deep in app store and let's open up their calendar as well right we did also want to install htop didn't we So I'm going to imagine, oh, it's just not in the repos at all. Okay, we won't worry about HTOP. Let's just open up top. So we are using 3.8. No, that's our total. Where are we? We're using 1.2 gig RAM, which is leaving 835 megabytes free. So let's exit that. And let's go and look at our app store. So that's loading. Again, this is not my main computer. This is just a laptop that I have spare. So things are going to be a bit slower on this. So while it's doing that, Let's have a look at the window spread now so we can chuck that. So that all looks rather similar to what it usually does. And again, it will open up with a fresh wallpaper on each new virtual desktop. So let's go. Oh, I think we've got our first crash. No, it was just lagging. OK, so let's go back to the left. And there you can see the way the bottom bar changes depending on what's behind it. So the colors changing quite a bit with the transparency there interesting right the app store is taking a rather long time to load what I'm gonna do is do a reboot and we're gonna open up the app store have a quick look at that and then we're just gonna wrap the video up there I think we've seen a lot of deepen on the channel lately but um, yeah looking good All right, we're just rebooting and we are at the login screen so it, um, it extends the login screen every time to my external display and then hopefully it remembers that we did set up a duplicate for the capture card. Yes, it has. Right, so before I do anything, I just want to open up top and see how much memory we're using. So we're using 750 megabytes. That's not too bad, you know. Right, what we want to do is try and get this app store open. Let's have a look. App store. It might just not load for us, you never know. I'll tell you what, I'll pause it for a few minutes and let it load. And if it loads, we'll, um, we'll have a look at it. If not, I'll uh, come back and just say bye, I guess. Um, yeah, let's pause it here. And just as I said that, it started loading. Okay, so here we are at the App Store. Um, it's not taking effect in all of these programs language yet. So there's even one in the top 10 that's got a different language. But that's not really down to deep in so much as the sort of app developers, I guess. Right, so here's your App Store. You have categories to the left. And you also have a section called My Apps, which will be your installed applications, which you can then uninstall this button here. So let's say if we wanted to search for GIMP. I know it's there because we just saw it in the welcome screen part. So there's GIMP. It's quite a nice looking app store. Um, I'd like to use it on my main computer actually to see how quick it is because it's very slow on this beta on this laptop here. Very slow. Right, what we're going to do is have a look at the um, the other mode in efficient mode now, which will give you a more traditional sort of taskbar. Again, with your application launchers to the left, a couple of pins here which are show desktop and multitasking view. So we've got a network error in our store there. So I'm not sure why that is because our network's fine. So maybe it's just having a bit of a moment. And as you can see now, the focus windows have a dark shade around it. And then the unfocused windows have like a translucent shade and then again clicking that 
as you can see that's how it does the sort of indicators of what's running and what's in the background so let's have a quick look at the multitasking view with some things open now so there you get your windows spread and again you can drag that to and from each desktop or open a whole new desktop oh that didn't work i wonder if we did this yes does work like that okay that's been our quick look at deep in v20 beta thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please subscribe and i'll see you on the next one bye bye